thank you for joining us for Church Online today. I'm Pastor Brian Rhodes. I want to declare to you today that it's a great day to be a Christian. It's a great day to be alive. We want to join together in prayer right now um, for the service, but also for uh, God to uh, miraculously bring a healing for this COVID-19 and from the pandemic that we're facing. And I want to read a couple of verses of scripture uh, to you before we pray together and pray this prayer together from Unite 714. Uh, Psalm 133 verses one and two, the Bible said, behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron and running down on the collar of his robes. Uh, John 17, 23 in the New Testament says, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Let's join in prayer together, praying and asking God to bless the services today as well as uh, asking God for deliverance from COVID-19. Heavenly Father, uh, we declare to you today that you're good. Um, on this day of Pentecost, we recognize that Pentecost is being celebrated around the world today. And we are thankful for everything you've done so far. And Lord, today we're asking you for a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit, that it would sweep over this entire world. We stand united with millions of Christians today from every nation, uh, praying together, representing every part of your church. And we cry out today with one voice in the name of your son, Jesus. And we're asking Lord that you would revive your church that you would heal our land and that you would empower us as a church to boldly proclaim the gospel. Heavenly Father, your word says that when your church becomes one, the world will know that you sent your son. And so Lord, as a living mosaic of the world's tribes, tongues and nations, we unite ourselves today around this simple request. In the name of Jesus, unite your church so the world will know that you sent your son. Today, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to fully eradicate COVID-19 from the earth and restore that which has been devastated by this pandemic. We thank you, God, for an outpouring of your spirit in the nations of the world. We pray and believe in the name of above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, amen. We're gonna sing a song now, and, and this song is entitled Holy Spirit. So if you'll sing with us, sing with all your heart, and let's worship the Lord together.
I want to invite you to take your Bibles and turn with me to Acts chapter 2 this morning as we look at this um, passage of Scripture talking about the uh, Holy Spirit being poured out on the church. And today, I, I mentioned earlier, today is Pentecost Sunday. Um, so, so we're going to actually title the message today, Pentecost, okay? Um, today is Pentecost Sunday. As you're turning to Acts chapter 2, we, we celebrate the birth of Jesus and everyone knows that is Christmas. And we, we, we make, make a big deal out of Christmas. And we also remember the resurrection of Christ. And we celebrate that. Most people recognize that as, as Easter. It's a special day to Christians. Because if, if Jesus only died, he, he was buried, um, we wouldn't serve a living Savior. But, but because he is risen, because of Easter and the, and the celebration of Easter, his resurrection... It is a special day for Christians around the world. But when we talk about Pentecost, the event we read about in Acts chapter 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit when Jesus promised, few people realize it. Few people realize it. Most feel like this day just isn't very important. Back in the scriptures, um, when we look into the scriptures, Jesus tells his disciples to wait for this day. So I want to say it's, it's a very important day uh, to Jesus and it's a very important day to the church. Um, when we look back in the scripture in John chapter 16, verses number seven and eight, John 16, uh, seven and eight, Jesus said, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the comforter or the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. You see, the Holy Spirit is in the world today. And, and the Lord went back to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So we see this is a very important uh, day in, in, the, in the life of Christianity and in, in the world today, it's a very important day when we talk about Pentecost. The Holy Spirit has a specific task. And I want to say the world needs the Holy Spirit today. And as a matter of fact, I want to say more, more personally today, as you're watching uh, and listening to my voice right now, you personally need the Holy Spirit to work in your life today. Without Him, no one would know they are lost and nobody would know they need a Savior. No one would understand the gospel without the Holy Spirit and, and no one would know there's a way out. Um, and Paul, Paul talked about that in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 and 4. He talked about is, is, is our gospel hid? And he said, if our gospel is hid or if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing whose minds the God of this world has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. And Paul was reminding these, these people in Corinth that, 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 that God had uh, tried to pour out His Spirit uh, so that they could be opened up to the gospel, but the God of this world has blinded them um, so that they cannot receive the truth of the gospel. So as we begin to unfold and unpack this uh, message today, we're going to look at Acts chapter 2. And, and I, want, I want us to read uh, Acts chapter 2 beginning in verse number 1. It says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in, the, in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? 
And then he begins to list all the different languages and all the different nationalities that were there. And in verse number 12, if you skip down to verse number 12, it says, So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What could this mean? Others mocking uh, said, They are full of new wine. And so as we begin this uh, message this morning, I want to pray even again that the Holy Spirit would work in your life right now. So if you would, uh, bow your head, close your eyes. Holy Spirit, we ask you to move in the hearts of everyone that is watching and listening right now to this message. Lord, we thank you for the, uh, uh, the day that we call Pentecost Sunday, and we acknowledge your presence right now. We acknowledge our need for your presence in our lives today and we pray that you'd move in a powerful way we thank you that you're here to to convict the world of sin of righteousness and judgment and we thank you lord for sending the holy spirit and we just pray for a great outpouring of your spirit on us right now in jesus name amen i want to make a couple of points about the holy spirit on this pentecost sunday and in in relation to the verses that we read the first point I want to make and I want to encourage you to write down as it's coming up on on your screen um, is this lives can only be changed with the help of the Holy Spirit lives can only be changed with the help of the Holy Spirit if we want to see a change in our life or a change in someone else's life human effort just won't do no matter how sincere, no matter how diligent we may be, the problem is, is not uh, us doing our best. The problem is not us having a lack of education or, or needing more education or, or, or to get smarter or to get more information or knowledge. Uh, the problem that we have with life change and needing life change, the problem we have has to do with our heart. It's a, it's a heart issue. It's a heart problem. And we're all sinners and we're all in need of God's help. And we talk about uh, uh, lives being changed. The only way lives can be changed is with the help of the Holy Spirit. Only the Holy Spirit can convict a man of his sinfulness and, and show a man his need for Jesus. And so as we pray for our relatives and our friends that, that they will be open to the promptings of the Holy Spirit when they have a chance to hear the gospel. That's what we need to be praying, that they would be open to the Holy Spirit and that he would speak to them. And, and we know that he's speaking to them because Jesus sent him into the world to convict us of our sin. He's in our world today. The Holy Spirit is here. And, and just like the wind that you can't see, uh, you can't see it where it blows and where it goes, uh, you can see the effects of that wind and you can see the effects of the Holy Spirit as well. He's in our world today doing what he's come to do. He's come to convict the world regarding sin. He's come to convict the world regarding righteousness or doing right. And he's come to convict the world or convince this world that judgment is coming. That's why we're told in the Bible not to grieve the Holy Spirit. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30 says, Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. And, and then also in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, it talks about us not putting out the Spirit's fire or not quenching the Holy Spirit because the Lord is speaking to us today. The Holy Spirit is speaking to us today and He does not want to be grieved and He does not want to be quenched. He does not want His fire to be put out. We see this change of lives in the group of followers in Acts chapter number 2. These followers, there was uh, a group of them together and they were all together in one place and some of them were fishermen and, and some of them were former prostitutes and some of them were ex-religious leaders and tax collectors and God formed them into a united group, diverse but united. We called the church and and we see this as, uh, lots of people see this as when the church was actually born and actually established before, before Pentecost happened, before uh, Jesus ascended back to heaven. These, these disciples were afraid and they were weak and they lacked faith and they didn't fully understand God's plan. And Jesus spent three years of his life 
in ministry, in public ministry, telling his disciples that he was going to go to the cross and die for their sin. And they didn't understand. They didn't understand. And they didn't understand. But the, the Spirit finally woke them up to this truth. They were afraid. They were weak. They lacked faith like many people today. But now the Holy Spirit is with them. And they become courageous leaders. They become passionate preachers of the gospel they're united as never before and even though they were very different they were all unified god changes us through his power today and i want to say it's the holy spirit that can help us and change us today just like it helped uh, those believers in that day and change believers in that day and so we see that after the ascension the disciples obeyed the lord's instruction and they waited. They waited together for 10 days. 10 days. I want to pause and reflect on that thought for a minute. Could you wait for 10 days for something great to happen? Could you, could you just wait consistently and constantly for 10 days, specifically for 10 days for something to happen? These, these disciples waited for 10 days and finally the scriptures tell us that the Holy Spirit came on them on the day of Pentecost. The, the word Pentecost means 50th. Uh, the 50th day after Passover is, is what we're learning about. And this Sunday we celebrate 50, the 50th day after Passover. This group we call the church was born at Pentecost. So in a way we're all part of this special uh, birthing of the church uh, on this day. And, and then we celebrate this Pentecostal Sunday and we think about this day also being significant in the Old Testament because the people of Israel celebrated a feast called the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks. It was a celebration for the harvest, the harvest of grain, but now for the church, Pentecost signifies the harvest of souls. We're not alone in the task. The Lord did not expect His disciples to do it alone. If you're still in Acts chapter 2, I want you to uh, look back at Acts chapter 1 and look at verse number 4. Acts 1, 4. And being assembled together with them, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which He said, You have heard from Me. Now, Je now Jesus, if you read this, Jesus is, is assembled together with them in Acts chapter 1 verse 4. Jesus is actually uh, eating with them and He gave them this command to, to wait, not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. A specific promise for a specific time and, and God ordained this to be. And, and then in verse number 8 of that same chapter, Jesus told them even more and, and revealed even more about what that promise and that waiting was to fulfill and what they were going to fulfill by waiting for that promise. Acts chapter 1 verse 8, notice what it says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when it happens in Acts chapter 2, verse 2, we read it, and I'll read it again. And suddenly, this is after the promise that Jesus told them to wait, and after He told them what the, what the promise was going to do to them, empower them to be witnesses. And a little while later, Acts chapter 2, verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. They waited for 10 days, and it happened. Where did the sound, where, where, where did it come from? Where, where did the Spirit come from? It came from heaven. Where did this power come from? It came from heaven. The power comes from heaven. Lives can only be changed with the help of the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. The Bible says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. And he says, if you're led by the spirit, verse 18, but if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. 
Lives can only be changed with the help of the Holy Spirit. And Paul is saying here that we need to walk in the Spirit so that we do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You know why people are fulfilling the lust of the flesh today? Because they're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. A.W. Tozier, a great man of God from yesteryear, I believe he died in 1963. He was a great evangelist and preacher of the gospel. Here's a, there's a powerful quote that he made about the Holy Spirit. It's a sad quote, but it's a powerful quote, and it's a convicting quote. He said, if the Holy Spirit was withdrawn from the church today, 95% of what we do would go on and no one would know the difference. If the Holy Spirit had been withdrawn from the New Testament church, 95% of what they did would stop and everybody would know the difference. I want to tell you in the middle of this pandemic, you say, preacher, what in the world is God trying to tell us in the middle of this pandemic? I'll tell you one thing he's trying to tell us. God is done with dead worship. God is done with fake worship. God is done with our meaningless, uh, pointless coming to church out of ritual and routine. God wants us to sit at home and contemplate how good He is. Not to have to come to church is, is something that some people are just freaking out about. But I want to tell you, God deserves to be worshipped 24-7, 365. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are. You should be able to worship God because God is a spirit. And the Bible says they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We need Him today. And He changes our lives. And, and when He changes us, He changes us to worship Him and glorify Him. And so we need to be doing that. Here's another thing I want you to write down in your notes today. The first point I made is lives can be changed. They can only be changed with the help of the Holy Spirit. And the second point I want to make is this. To witness effectively, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. To witness effectively, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. I read this story about this lady who went into a watch shop to have her watch fixed. The man disappeared. When, when she brought her watch out and gave it to the man, he disappeared, he went to the back, and he soon returned, and, and her watch was running perfectly. And she was so surprised. She, she asked, how could he fix the watch so quickly? He told her it only needed a battery, a new battery. And she said, battery? No, nobody ever said anything about a battery. I've been winding this watch every day for the past two years. <laughs> and you know the truth is, that's the way a lot of people are in living life. She thought it was her, 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 her own effort that kept the watch running. She thought by winding that watch every day for the last two years, she thought that's what was keeping that watch going. Sometimes we think that way too. Sometimes we think that it's our own efforts that keep things running. It's our own efforts that keep things going. And I want to tell you, we need to pray constantly for the Holy Spirit to fill us and to use us because without the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we can't do nothing. We can't do anything. I don't know how you say that, but, but whether the grammar's right or anything, but I know that the doctrine is true that without me, Jesus said, you can do nothing. We need His Spirit to fill us and to use us. The reason for the need of this power is very clear. Jesus says, and you will be my witnesses in Acts 1.8. The purpose of the church is to communicate God's love to a lost and a dying world. The theme of Pentecost is is communication. Write that down in your notes. The theme of Pentecost is communication. God gave them the gift of tongues so they were able to speak the native languages of the surrounding regions. The purpose is to communicate the wonders of God in native tongues in understandable languages so people could know who Jesus is. God's intention is clear. The message of the gospel must be preached to all people to the ends of the earth. We need to communicate it. Look at your neighbor and say, communicate it. You know, we need to be telling people about Jesus. We need to be communicating the gospel. Unless people hear the gospel, they are not able to respond to the gospel. In, 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 Romans, chapter, in Romans chapter 10, um, verse number uh, 
we, we always read Romans, Romans 10, 13, Who, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But verse 14 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear without a preacher? You see, God has called people to communicate the gospel. God has called you to communicate his gospel to somebody else. Unless people hear the gospel, they're not able to respond to it. You look at the long list of nations described in Acts chapter 2 verses 9 through 11. And you'll see that in all those languages, uh, in all those nations, I'm sorry, there's a language barrier that exists. God wants, God wants them. And what a beautiful picture of God's love that says no language barriers, no nations uh, will be uh, uh, restricted from hearing my message of love for them. And he says that, that, the, that, that God wants them, every one of them, to hear the message in their own language. The focus here is not the tongues. It, the focus is evangelism. The world needs to hear the message of God's love. Uh, what does this tell us? If, if we understand the heart of God here, then we need to tell others about Jesus. Unless someone goes to them, they will not be able to hear the gospel. We got to do whatever we can do. The purpose has not changed. The moment we come to know Christ, God commissions us with the, to, to share the message with our world. Listen, I, I tell you, one of the first things that happens in any heart of any person that gets saved, you know what it is? They start getting concerned for their friends and family to know Jesus. And the devil is a master. If he can get you off course, he, he will get you off course and he will get you, he, he will get you sidetracked because his goal, like I read in 2 Corinthians 4, 4, is to blind the minds of those that don't know the gospel. And so if he can get you off course, he'll do anything you can, he can to get you off course from telling others. Your, your world that you live in may be just a little circle of friends that you know and the people that you work with or hang out with. The Lord did not expect his disciples to meet in that upper room and the spirit to fall and then immediately go out and start uh, getting their boats ready and going around the world with the gospel. You see, the disciples were to go to, to right there where they were and start spreading the gospel. They, they share the gospel in Jerusalem first and then Judea and then Samaria and then it moves all the way around the world. Listen, the, the, the gospel didn't start being shared in the United States. Thank God that the gospel's here. But it wasn't started. The, the gospel presentation wasn't started over here. Start where you are. But we've got to start. Listen, because Jesus asked them to go. And the reason that he asked his disciples to go was because he knew they wouldn't come. People are not just knocking our doors down right now. Trying to find out when COVID-19 uh, 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 the, the, the pandemic uh, quarantine's over with so that they can come to church. People haven't been ringing our phone off the hook going, when are y'all going to open up? When are y'all going to open up? When are y'all going to open up? You want to know why? Because uh, they're, not, they're, not, they're not counseled. The lost world's not counseled uh, or, or conditioned to come to Christ. Uh, we're conditioned to go because we have the Holy Spirit living in us. We have to go to them. This reminds us of our need to pray if we want to see the lost reach for Christ. And I read this story about one New Year's Day in the Tournament of Roses parade. A beautiful float suddenly sputtered and, and quit. It just stopped working. It stopped, stopped moving. Come to find out it was out of gas. The whole parade, the whole Tournament of Roses parade was held up until someone could get a can of gas. The amusing thing was this float represented the Standard Oil Company. With its vast oil resources, its truck was out of gas. And that is uh, pretty comical if you think about it. Often Christians, as, as Christians, we neglect our spiritual maintenance and, and though we're clothed with power as, as believers, we find ourselves out of gas. We're just, we're just wore out. We're out of gas. We, we, we've given up. In the Old Testament, when you read about the tabernacle, 
And within the tabernacle, there was a fire on the altar and that fire must be kept burning. It could not be allowed to go out. In Leviticus chapter 6, you can read about it in verses 12 and 13. Every morning, the priest would go out and add firewood to the fire and range the burnt offering on the fire and burn the fat on it because the fire must be kept burning on the altar continuously. It must not go out. Today, uh, as the New Testament puts it, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, it talks about our body being uh, the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the light of Christ must shine in us and through us. It should never be allowed to go out. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 19, do not uh, put out the Spirit's fire. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Are we going to make a difference in this world in these last days? Ask yourself this question. Do you want to make a difference in this world in these last days? I hope you're saying yes. And I want to say we are going to make a difference in these last days. And it's going to be because of the Holy Spirit of God working to change our life and to make us effective witnesses for the glory of God. I want to challenge you by closing this sermon out and saying don't let God's fire inside of you go out. Walk in the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit and obey God's Spirit as He speaks to you. God is speaking to you today to change your life. Maybe it's for devotion. Maybe you need to get more devoted to Christ. Maybe He's, maybe the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart right now about sin in your life. And you need to quit, you need to quit uh, being a part of sinful activities. Maybe it's, maybe it's secret sin. Maybe it's sin... Uh, maybe it's maybe maybe it's computerized or digital sin that you're you're dabbling in and you've got it hidden out on your phone or your iPad or your computer and and nobody knows it but you but God does and and, and God's speaking to your heart right now about sin that you need to confess or get rid of it but maybe it's about salvation maybe you need to be saved I don't know what it is but I know this the Holy Spirit is speaking to you today and trying to convict you of sin, sin in your life, and trying to convict you today of righteousness or right living. He's, he's convicting us that we need to live right. And He's also convicting us about judgment is coming. Right there where you're at, you may be uh, a lost sinner and you're listening to me right now, watching me right now, and you don't know Christ. I want to invite you and tell you you can know Him today. You can, you can become a believer in Christ today. It's as easy as A, B, C. The A stands for admit you're a sinner. Admit you're a sinner. Romans 3.10 says, as it is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Today, do you admit that you're a sinner and, and that you're doing things and, and living in ways that are not pleasing to God and, and uh, you, you're, you're away from Him and you're not, you, you've, never, you've never trusted Him for Savior? The B stands for believe that Jesus loves you and that he died to save you. Do you believe that today? Romans 5, 8 says God demonstrates his love to us and that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrated his love for you and I when he sent Jesus to the cross. And C stands for commit your life to Jesus. Romans 10, 13, I read it earlier. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says you'll be saved. I wonder today if you've never done that before, but the Holy Spirit's convicting you of your sin right now. And he's saying, you need to do what that preacher's saying right now. You need to place your faith in Jesus. I want to invite you to pray with me right there where you're at. And my prayer won't save you, but your faith in Christ will. You say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, but I believe that Jesus loves me and he died to save me. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and change my life right now. Lord, help me to live for you starting today. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. We want, to, we want to celebrate with you. We want to congratulate you on the decision you made to trust Christ. 
We rejoice in that. I want to invite you to text the number that's coming up on the screen right now. And I want to, I want to share a, a Bible with you. I want to give you some more information about growing in your Christian life. And I want to encourage you as a, as a believer, the Holy Spirit speaking to you right now about living a righteous life. The Holy Spirit speaking to you right now as a believer about the judgment that's coming to this earth. The Holy Spirit is speaking today to us and He's challenging us right there where we're at to, to be a witness for Him and to allow Him to change our life, to allow us to walk in the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit, and to obey God's Spirit from day to day. So I want to pray with you and ask you to, to be sensitive to His Spirit. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I'm asking that you would help all believers that are watching right now. God, as you convict them, Lord, you said in your word, you came to convict us of, of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And Lord, as you convict us right now, we just want to thank you for that conviction. We want to thank you for loving us enough to speak into our hearts and try to change our lives. And Lord, we also want to thank you that you're speaking in our lives about being a witness for you. And so, Lord, we ask you to empower us to be a witness. We also ask you to change our lives. And we pray that you'd move in a powerful way like only you can. We thank you so much for loving us, for dying to save us. And I pray that you'd move in our hearts now and change us to bring glory and honor to you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to say uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you also for giving online. Thank you for being so generous to allow us to continue to partner with our missionaries around the world to continue to pay our bills, to keep the lights on and keep everything going here at the church. Um, online giving is available. You can visit our, our website, lakelandbaptist.church. We would, we would be uh, thankful for any gift that you would give. Uh, if you're giving tithes and offerings uh, weekly, I want to encourage you to keep, keep that up as well. We want to say thanks for joining us today. Um, we want to remind you, um, we're, we're coming up on Father's Day in a couple of weeks. We're going to start back with a Sunday morning service here at 10 o'clock on Father's Day. So I want to encourage you uh, to, to be getting ready for that as well. Uh, stay, stay safe and stay well. We're praying for you. If you need us, uh, reach out to us. You know how to get a hold of us day or night. We love you. We're praying with you. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today, and we'll see you soon.